In this video, we'll talk a little bit about the fundamentals of speed, distance, and time. These three concepts are interrelated on any vessel, whether it's a research vessel, a military ship, um, a recreational vessel, it all comes down to speed, distance, and time, which is a core skill to have when plotting on a chart or navigating in general. There's three formulas that you can remember, or if you're pretty good with algebra, you can kind of work them out yourself. The main one that I recommend remembering is speed is equal to distance over time. Distance over time. If you work out the algebra, you can see that these other equations kind of take advantage of that. For instance, time is equal to distance over speed, and distance is equal to speed times time. The other really important thing to remember is the units of measure. Just like any mathematics that you do, the units are very important. Speed is always in knots. Knots are a, a traditional way of measuring speed. In the old days, a sailor would throw over a rope with a bunch of knots tied in it, and they would see how long it took the knots to pass by. Oh, seven knots passed by in the time that it took me to, to turn my watch, so we're going seven knots. We still use that knowledge uh, and that terminology, but what is a knot? Well, it's a nautical mile per hour. And that gives you a clue as to what the other units of measure are. For distance, it's always gonna be in nautical miles. And for time, it's always gonna be in hours. So if you really just remember speed is equal to distance over time, and you do some algebra, you can figure out the rest of the equations. And if you remember, knots is nautical miles per hour, you can remember the unit of measure for all these things. What gets a little tricky sometimes, whether you're working on a scenario for a test or just navigating your ship out there in real life, is that sometimes you don't get information in these units. For instance, what if you wanted to know something about the time that it would take you to travel in 36 minutes? You need to be able to convert between minutes and hours. Likewise, if you didn't have nautical miles, you could use yards or meters or kilometers. There needs to be a, a conversion factor for that. And then finally, if you wanted to do speed in a different um, unit, like miles per hour or kilometers per hour or the speed of light kind of thing, there would be a conversion for that. But if you want to use these formulas, you have to remember that speed is in knots, time is in hours, and distance is in um, nautical miles. So those are the units that we're gonna use. By the way, if you ever needed to convert hours, for instance, if you did have 36 minutes, how do we convert that to hours? You're always gonna either multiply or divide by 60 to convert these things. But to convert from minutes to hours, you simply divide by 60 minutes per hour. And 36 divided by 60 is equal to 0 0.6 hours. So that way you can use the hours in your formula if you need to. All right, so if they give you minutes, divide by 60 to get the hours. And likewise, if you had the hours, multiply by 60 to get the minutes. So it's either multiplying or dividing by 60. The good news is, Pretty much every case, if you do the wrong thing, it's gonna look like nonsense on your calculator. So just a couple of key points for speed, distance, time. Speed is in knots, time is in hours, distance is in nautical miles. And then to convert for, from minutes to hours, divide by 60. And to convert from hours to minutes, multiply by 60 to get there. Let's do a couple of practice problems that you may find in real life if you're navigating. So let's say that your speed is equal to 10 knots. The captain has set your speed at 10 knots and that's the speed that you're gonna go. And you have traveled, your distance is equal to 20 nautical miles. Maybe you look at a chart plotter or you've got some other information that says, hey, we've just traveled 20 nautical miles. How much, um, how much time is this gonna take? How long does it take? What is the time? How much time did it take or how much time will it take? Well, we need to think about what formula to use. In this case, we're looking for time. So our formula is distance divided by speed. First thing I gotta do, make sure that the units are correct. Speed is in knots, distance is in nautical miles. Um, so I can do it. So time is equal to distance over speed. So in this case, it's going to be 20 over 10. 20 for distance, 
10 for speed, which equals, if I do that in the calculator, 20 divided by 10 equals two hours. So if I was on a journey and I had 20 miles to go until my destination, and I was traveling at a rate of 10 knots, it would take me two hours to get there. So I could use that for planning. I could use that to just know how much time has gone by, uh, all kinds of uses in that case. Here's another example. Let's say that our speed is 18 knots. We're on a pretty quick moving ship. And I wanna know how far will I go in 24 hours? In other words, how many miles per day will I cover if I go 18 knots? Maybe I'm crossing an ocean or taking a large journey. So um, what is the distance that I'll cover in 24 hours at 18 knots? Well, in this case, I need to think about the formula that I'm gonna use. Distance is equal to speed times time. And I gotta make sure that my units are right. So speed is in knots, that's good. Time is in hours, that's good. So distance is equal to speed times time. So I'll do 18 times 24, and that should give me my answer. If I type that into the calculator, 18 times 24 is 432 nautical miles. So every day that I travel at 18 knots, I'll cover 432 nautical miles. That's really good for planning. If I'm planning a voyage across an ocean, I can figure out how many miles per day that I'll cover. Here's a third example. Let's say that over the past 1.5 hours, my time is 1.5 hours, I look in my logbook and I've traveled a certain distance. Maybe I've traveled a distance of uh, 14 nautical miles, 14 nautical miles in the past 1.5 hours. Well, what is the speed that I traveled at? We're speed demons, we wanna know what our speed was. Over the past 1.5 hours, I traveled 14 nautical miles. What is the speed? Well, I need to think about the formula. In this case, speed is equal to distance over time. So that's good. Number two, check the units. Time is in hours, that's good. Distance is in nautical miles, which is good. So I can use the formula. Speed is equal to distance, which is 14 divided by time, 1.5. And if I type that into the calculator, I'll get the answer of 9.3 knots. 9.33333 knots. But that's usually good enough on navigation um, tasks is one decimal place for the knots. So if over the past 1.5 hours I traveled 14 nautical miles, how fast did I go? I traveled at 9.3 knots. So one thing that that would be helpful to do is if you thought you were going 10 knots and you were planning on that, hey, we're going a little slower than I thought. Maybe we need to maybe we need to turn the engine up a little bit kind of thing. Now, here's an interesting point. This often comes up in, in navigation problems and whatnot is what if you don't have 1.5 hours instead? What if they give it to you as like 90 minutes? I know often when I think about 1.5 hours, I think 90 minutes is equivalent. So if I go for a, a bike ride that's 90 minutes long, another way to say that is 1.5 hours of biking. So it really depends who you want to impress, what, what figure you use, right? Well, these are equivalent, we know that, but if I put 90 into this formula, it's not gonna work at all. So if I was given 90 minutes, I need to take an additional step. I need to turn those 90 minutes into hours. How do I do that? Well, if I take minutes and I divide it by 60, that'll give me the number of hours that I have. 90 divided by 60 is 1.5 hours. That is what I can put into my formula when I'm calculating this kind of stuff as well. Likewise, maybe sometimes you don't have information about um, the nautical miles that you've covered. Maybe your chart plotter is set to yards. That's a very common thing to do on uh, navigation is using yards instead of nautical miles. We generally don't use meters or kilometers in nautical navigation, but you could. There's always just a conversion factor for that. So for example, if um, maybe you covered 28,000 yards 
in that same 1.5 periods. Well, there's a conversion for yards to nautical miles that it's very easy. There is 2,000 yards in one nautical mile. So that's just a handy thing to know um, when we're navigating. Usually you won't see something as big as this. If you're navigating less than a nautical mile, sometimes we'll use yards instead of nautical miles. But it's perfectly okay to say things like 0.75 nautical miles or 0.1 nautical miles as well. But if I did want to know how much yards those are, I can just do my conversions. So 0.1 nautical miles by 2,000 yards is equal to 200 yards. And likewise, 0.75 nautical miles, 0.75 times 2,000, is equal to 1,500 yards. So these are interchangeable things. Sometimes you'll hear when you're navigating out on the water um, a discussion about yards versus nautical miles, but it's perfectly fine to use nautical miles all the time. However, if you're going to do these speed distance time formulas, the units are very important. Speed has to be in knots, time has to be in hours, and distance needs to be in nautical miles. If you don't have those units, you need to convert them, and then you can use the formulas. Likewise, if you've got uh, a good algebra understanding, if you just remember speed is equal to distance over time, you can work out the other formulas that way. And if algebra is not your thing, maybe just memorizing these three or writing them on the side of the chart as a reminder would be helpful for you. So that's just a little overview of speed, distance, time. Sometimes you'll see these things on practice problems. Sometimes you'll see them in real life. Uh, so it really depends on your situation, how you're going to use this information. But if you remember these three, uh, you're going to be good to go.